Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rose Rice and I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. Thank you to Cat Saturn for the use of their beautiful artwork in my thumbnail. Their info will also be linked below, so be sure to give them some love. I am currently working on a lot of projects for you guys right now, so I hope you enjoy this complete series of Fashion Forward. It's probably going to be pretty long, so wherever you like to listen to fan fiction, on a long drive, doing chores, doing homework, you can just sit down and just listen to it. So I hope you enjoy Fashion Forward. Marinette Dupin Chang, 25 years old, successful businesswoman. Marinette, you've got a call on line one. It's from a fashion brand in New York. Marinette immediately stopped working on the mock-up wedding dress she was creating to stare at the blonde girl who delivered the message. Surprisingly, Marinette and Chloe were business partners and had become pretty good friends as well. A few years back, Chloe decided to branch away from her father's money and earn some for herself. Marinette happened to need a model and secretary for her own brand that was climbing in popularity. Now they were colleagues working out of a small studio in a bustling district in downtown Paris. Really? New York? Thank you, Chloe. I'll get that right away. As soon as she left the half-dressed mannequin, she immediately tripped over her tape measure, barely catching her balance. Chloe crossed her arms over her stylish blouse and shook her head, long blonde hair swishing on either side of her. Some things never change. Collect yourself, girlfriend. We could have a lot potentially riding on this. Don't screw it up. Chloe smirked, then left the room. The young designer took a deep breath and then answered line one. Hello, Divine Designs by Marinette. Marinette speaking. Good morning, miss. An attractive male voice greeted her over the phone. My name is Adrian Agrest, and I represent Agrest Apparels in Manhattan, New York. A lump was in Marinette's throat. Agrest Apparel? Ever since before she began her career, the Agresta brand and its creator, Gabriel Agrest, served as a major source of inspiration, even though their brand concepts were drastically different. She struggled to contain her excitement. Hello, Mr. Agrest. How may I help you? He chuckled. Please, call me Adrian. Mr. Agrest is my father. Sorry, Mr. A I mean... <clears throat> she cleared her throat, thinking, this isn't going well. I'm sorry, Adrian. So, how can I help you? She peered at her watch, aware of the time difference. It had just turned 2.30, which meant it was 8.30 a.m. in New York. Mr. Agrest has become aware of your presence on social media and is quite impressed, especially with your work in the wedding gown industry. He believes there may be a collaboration opportunity combining our respective styles. It made Marinette feel slightly uncomfortable how formal Adrian spoke with her. She always strived to be a professional and had an amazing working relationship with many brands, several of which becoming her clients at some point. This guy had to be around her age, so she didn't enjoy all of the formalities. She ignored her feelings about that and said, Wow, I don't know what to say. That's such an incredible opportunity. Then say yes. His voice sounded smug. Okay, she exclaimed, but let's talk first. What did you have in mind? Of course. I'm sure you're aware that our brand focuses on dark color schemes and avant-garde fashion. We would love to combine your feminine aesthetic with our style to create an extravagant, unusual wedding dress to premiere at New York Fashion Week in February. You, of course, can choose the model you would like to wear the dress so you can have her measurements. In regards to payment, we will send you and the model 15,000 euros up front and the other half when the dress is completed. In addition, you will receive a 20% commission on sales if we have extra orders for a replica of that dress. He took a deep breath after his speech. Marinette, flabbergasted, noticed Chloe peeking around the corner of her office door in curiosity. So, what do you say? There was hesitation in his voice. How could Marinette say anything other than, Yes, that sounds perfect! I am looking forward to working with you! She was sure he would know she was smiling like an idiot just from the sound of her voice, but she didn't care. Since graduating high school, Marinette had created a ten-year plan for conducting business. Before creating Divine Designs, she ran a successful Etsy shop selling everything from DIY projects, clothes, and small trinkets. 
Her younger self could never imagine such an opportunity coming her way. Excellent. I will let Mr. Agrest know. That is the second time he referred to his father as Mr. Agrest. Weird. What is the best way to contact you? Marinette thought for a second. While she did have a cell phone, she typically didn't answer it. She was much too busy, which may sound like a humble brag, but it's the truth. Chloe generally answered all of her calls. Just DM me on Insta at Divine Designs Marinette. That's your best bet, she said as she grabbed a sticky note to take down his information. My account is at Adrian Models. I'll be in touch. Marinette wrote the username on the purple sticky note, sticking it to her desktop computer. Adrian hung up, and she was going to buzz Chloe into her office on the intercom, but there was no need. She had been trying to eavesdrop anyway. So, don't just keep me waiting. What did he say? The impatient blonde tapped her foot, feeling anxiety rising in her chest. Though it was Marinette's business, any move she made in those respects could greatly Even affect her Marinette as well. Even though Marinette decided not to take commissions for a Chloe, while, she was still exhausted. You may exhausted. want to pack your bags. She spent most We're of going the day sketching and hunched over her sewing machine. Only 25, but her back felt about 80. She had another long day ahead of her. Maybe today she would finally start a mock-up on the mannequin. It was proving more difficult to combine the aggressed apparel, edgy style, with her delicate feminine style. She searched for inspiration most days. She sat at her acrylic dining table, which looked more or less like clear plastic. Like most of the furniture she purchased, it was all about the aesthetics for Instagram. She rummaged through her kitchen looking for anything to eat and settled on avocado toast, which was yummy enough and she could at least get a cute picture for the gram. Marinette positioned the plate just right on her table. She was the only person she knew who had a ring light at the dining table to capture the perfect lighting for her food. In her defense, it wasn't just for her. Chloe spent most days hanging out in Marinette's studio apartment, so being a model, a ring light was essential for her. The designer snapped a gorgeous picture of her avocado toast and ungracefully shoved a piece into her mouth, getting avocado everywhere. As she chewed, she uploaded her picture to Instagram, but didn't have the energy to think of a witty caption, so she decided to go with hashtag white woman's Instagram, because who doesn't love Bo Burnham? She slid her phone into her paint-stained pajama bottom pockets and continued eating in silence until she felt her phone buzz. She silently prayed it wouldn't be another client as she glanced at her lock screen. Whew, it's just an Instagram notification. She finished her toast, placing the dirty dish in her empty dishwasher, then sprawling out on her blush velvet sofa, checking her phone. By that point, only a couple minutes had passed since she uploaded that photo, but it already had at least a thousand likes. That wasn't unusual, but she noticed a like and a comment from none other than at Adrian Models. He was the first person to like her photo, and he posted a cheeky comment. While this isn't a goat cheese salad, it still looks delicious. Marinette rolled her eyes. So he's a Bo Burnham fan, too. Huh. She absentmindedly clicked on his profile, seeing a boy donning a leather jacket, wearing eyeliner. Somehow, that wasn't how she pictured him at all. She kept scrolling deeper and deeper. Adrian tended to wear all black in his photos, likely because that was the color palette of the brand, but Marinette found some photos of him looking more... natural wearing simple t-shirts, jeans, and converse. Pictures of him posing with small children, even. She liked that softer side. She smiled to herself as she continued to scroll. Instagram was her addiction. She threw her phone as it buzzed in her hands. Jeez, I am such a spaz! It's probably from all the sleepless nights, she thought as she untucked her legs and reached to the floor to grab it. It was just a DM. Adrian... Good morning. How are things going? With the design? Pretty good. I've been sketching nearly non-stop to get some inspiration. I think I will be ready to start a mock-up soon. That's great. But I meant how are things going with you? Pretty good, I guess. But isn't it like 2 a.m. in New York? What are you doing up? Couldn't sleep. Saw that you were awake and decided to just say hello. Marinette giggled to herself. Was this flirting? She couldn't tell. She never gave herself the chance to actually get close to a boy, so she's never been in a serious relationship. 
Just a lot of dead-end flings that didn't mean anything in the long run. Well, Mr. Model, if you don't get your full eight, you're going to look like a zombie tomorrow. Trust me, those are not the kind of bags you want. She giggled once again, this time at her joke. She jumped nearly a foot high off her couch when her front door swung open suddenly. Hey, loser! Chloe barged in with probably ten shopping bags. Her eyes settled on Marinette, who looked, well... You look ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous! Good morning, Chloe, Marinette murmured with a roll of her eyes. There's nothing wrong with what I'm wearing. She got up to greet Chloe and lightened her load. I'm going to fix you, Dupang Chang. I bought us an all-new formal wardrobe. Can't have you looking like a slob in New York. She unpacked bags upon bags. That's nice, Chloe, but you really didn't have to. Marinette said, looking through the different fabrics, feeling them for their quality. Please, you call yourself a designer and you're wearing whatever that is. She made a disgusted face. Right. Even on her worst days, Chloe Bourgeois wouldn't be caught dead in anything that wasn't designer. I'm not a model, Chloe. She shrugged, still examining some of the clothes Chloe placed in front of her. But you could be. You're so pretty. Besides, what would Adrian think if he saw you in that? Chloe made a face, pointing at Marinette's outfit. Uh, who cares? Marinette could tell that her comment made Chloe visibly shocked. What? I'm not the one who has pictures of him all over my workstation. You're crushing hard, girl. Marinette teased the blushing blonde who huffed and turned away. Whatever. Just put this on. I can't stand looking at you anymore. Marinette smiled, taking the baby pink dress, her signature color, from Chloe's outstretched hand. It was a baby doll style dress that perfectly captured the divine design style. Chloe may come off as abrasive and rude to most people, but she has a good heart. In all honesty, Marinette may have never pursued her designing dreams if it wasn't for her friend. Marinette struggled with self-image as well as confidence, but Chloe gave her that extra push to go out on a limb. With Chloe by her side, Marinette could do anything. They were an unstoppable team. Adrian Agrest, 26 years old, New York. Adrian Agrest practiced the art of business in preparation for when he finally took over Agrest Apparel someday. He worked diligently every day because he loved his father. Also, that's what was expected of him. The young Agrest always did a great job, though. Through his modeling career, he was able to make important connections that benefit the brand. Modeling was another thing his heart wasn't 100% invested in. He liked it, sure. But he wanted to... Well, he wasn't sure. Modeling being the only thing he'd ever done, he was lacking in the life experience department. He traveled all the time and met extraordinary and extravagant people. He couldn't begin to name all of the A-list celebrities he'd met, but he felt unfulfilled somehow. He sat, drumming his fingers on his desk, staring at the white-tiled ceiling. His entire office was decorated in a simplistic white minimalist style. He didn't mind it too much. He gradually began to bring in live plants and succulents to make it feel more like home. He spent much more time in that small office than he did in his own house anyways. So much so that he didn't have many actual friends his age. Most models he worked with are mainly interested in clout and use photo shoots as a networking opportunity, but he wouldn't consider them friends. He had procrastinated long enough. As Adrian stood, his father appeared in his doorway, which was strange. Usually his father would send an assistant or something. Even as an adult, Adrian was still intimidated by his father. Adrian was tall, but his father towered over him. He couldn't remember the last time he'd seen his father crack a smile. Probably not since his mother passed away ten years ago. Was he in trouble? He hadn't actually done anything since he came in that morning, so it's likely. Adrian, are you busy? Gabriel Agrest's arms were behind his back as he sounded like he was talking to any employee, not his son. Adrian bowed slightly. He was used to these formal exchanges, unfortunately. No, sir. I just wrapped up, actually. Okay, so that was a little white lie. I guess DMing Marinette on Instagram doesn't constitute work. 
But she is a business partner now, he thought sarcastically. Good. I have a car waiting for you outside and your bags are packed. I wanted to see you off. Gabriel removed his glasses, rubbing the bridge of his nose. Adrian's eyes widened. His response didn't come automatically. Bags? Uh, where am I going? He felt like he should know, but he didn't. He had checked the bulletin board for notices, but he hadn't seen anything, and his father clearly never mentioned it. The fashion designer's brows furrowed in confusion, then disappointment. Son, when's the last time you checked your company email? He shook his head, then placed the small silver bifocals back on his face. Oops. No, he hadn't checked it in a few weeks. Sometimes he modeled, and sometimes he kept the company on track, so it must have slipped his mind. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. He braced himself for a tongue lashing from his father, but it never came. Gabriel's steel-blue eyes peered down at Adrian. I don't want your apologies. I want you to be better, and don't mess this up. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Adrian slid into the expensive luxury car, being wary of the seats. As his bodyguard drove him in familiar silence, Adrian finally checked his email, and there it was, an email addressed to him that presumably got sent out to the entire Agrest Apparel team. Attention, Adrian Agrest. Co-executive Adrian Agrest will be traveling to Paris, France, on October 8, 2021, to visit our new business partner, Marinette Dupin Chang. The rest of the email laid out the itinerary. He felt foolish for not having seen it. Wait! he thought suddenly. Does Marinette know I'm coming? Before he had time to think about it more, he was ushered into Newark Airport. He went through the motions of security, handing over his passport and ID, bag checks, the whole nine yards. He found a seat towards the front of the plane in first class, thanks to his father, and now he could relax. Adrian reclined his seat, then remembered, Oh, Marinette! Before takeoff, he had time to grab his phone and open Instagram. He had so many unread messages even since he last checked his inbox an hour ago. He swiped down until he saw Marinette's username. Hey, Marinette. I want to let you know that I'm actually on my way to Paris. I'm so sorry this is last minute. It is to me, too. Well, it wouldn't have been if I had checked my email. Anyway, my flight should land in seven hours. I'll see you soon. Adrian's coming? To Paris? Right now? No. No, no, no! Marinette wasn't ready! There was so much to do. The dress wasn't ready! She plopped down at her sewing machine, moving fabric through it carefully but quickly, then caught a glimpse of her pajama pants. She shot up. I can't meet Adrian like this! She thought frantically. She briskly ran back to the kitchen and sifted through the bags Chloe brought. She found the pink baby doll dress and held it up to her. Through this, Marinette tripped over the legs of the kitchen chairs, running into the sharp edge of the acrylic table, knocking over the centerpiece. She scrambled, trying to collect the contents of the bowl, but she had made a huge mess. Chloe slammed her Cosmo magazine down on her thighs. Marinette Dupang Chang, what on earth are you doing? Can't you see I'm trying to read? Well, actually, I've been nominated for the best dressed list for the fifth time in a row. And I wanted to laugh at Lila, who was voted worst dressed. It's not surprising. She is utterly ridiculous. She seemed oblivious to Marinette's struggles. Marinette found her way back to her feet, putting everything back on the table, cheeks red. Oh, sorry, Chloe. I guess I'm just a bit... Uh, scatterbrained and nervous. Chloe didn't wait long to go back to reading her magazine. Marinette stared at her for a moment before Chloe placed the magazine on the edge of the couch, crossing her arms, appearing uninterested. She sighed. Fine, what's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing's wrong, exactly. It's just... Adrian's coming to Paris, Marinette blurted out. Chloe's eyes lit up. She idolized him. She was probably his biggest fan. 
Pictures of Adrian lined her workspace, and they were in her apartment, surrounding her bed with little twinkly lights, too. Excuse me? Adrian's coming? Why didn't you tell me sooner? I've got to go fix my makeup. Oh, and my hair! She pulled the scrunchie off her wrist and threw her silky blonde hair up in her signature ponytail. Chloe walked quickly to make herself presentable. Adrian won't be here for another five hours! Marinette yelled after Chloe, but her blonde friend had already run off. Okay. Well, at least the apartment is clean, but I, on the other hand, look like a mess. A shower would do me some good. Marinette muttered to herself, a habit she picked up that helped her think better. She took her phone out of her bra, albeit not a great place for it, but her pajama pants didn't have any pockets. She opened the DM again, reading it over for probably the fifth time. Adrian was coming. And he'd be here soon. Oh, she completely forgot to message him back. Yeah, he wouldn't get it now, but it'd be helpful to have her address for when he landed. Hi, Adrian. Can't wait to meet you. She thought for a second. Would it be more polite if she greeted him at the airport? Maybe at baggage claim? I'll meet you at the airport. See you soon. Okay, no worries. Yeah, she'd meet him. If she was his host, it'd be rude not to. Oh, he'd be staying at her house. In her guest room? She hadn't thought of that. Marinette clasped her hands around her face, smushing her cheeks. Okay, Marinette, don't panic. Shower, hair, makeup, dress. It's simple. One baby step at a time. He's a colleague. Everything will be fine, right? Right. All clean, with stomach doing pirouettes, Marinette climbed into her rose gold Renault to meet Adrian at the airport. She parked, paying an obnoxious parking fee, then stood at baggage claim and waited. She hung around, hoping she'd recognize him. She twisted the hem of her dress in her hands, knuckles turning white. She walked around, looking lost, until... Oof! Marinette tripped and fell to her knees, the contents of her purse spilling out. I'm so sorry, miss. Let me help you. A boy knelt down beside her to get some of her things. They both reached for her purse at the same time, hands brushing. Sorry, and thank you. She took the makeup items from him, shoving them in her purse. He held out a hand to help her up. She hesitated before taking it. Huh. Soft hands. Probably softer than hers. Her hands were usually calloused and covered in band-aids from her sewing projects. Marinette smoothed her dress, hoisting her purse onto her shoulders. I'm so sorry again. Thank you for your help. She finally met his gaze, looking up at this man. He was about a foot taller than her, shaggy blonde hair, messy, probably from sleeping on the long flight. Green eyes crinkled as he smiled down at her. You're Adrian. Adrian Agrest? Uh, yes, I am. And you are? He looked amused. Marinette didn't know why. He was world famous. People probably recognized him wherever he went. Marinette tucked a strand of hair behind her ears before speaking attempting to keep her voice even. She offered a hand to shake his. Hello, Adrian. I'm Marinette. Nice to meet you. Adrian Agrest, fashion icon and son of legendary fashion designer Gabriel Agrest, was in Marinette's apartment. Good thing she had cleaned. As she let Adrian into her home, her heart pounded loudly in her ears. Your home is lovely, Marinette he said as he eyed the monochromatic look of her kitchen, thinking how it matched the aesthetic of his office. You're lovely, Chloe uttered, but was met with a swift jab to the ribs by Marinette's bony elbow. The young designer had a smile painted on while her assistant did all she could not to double over in pain. I mean, it's lovely to have you here, Adrian, Chloe said through gritted teeth, staring down Marinette out of the corner of her eyes and she knew they'd talk about that later. Oops. So your room will be down this hall to the left, right across from mine. I'm sure you've had a long trip. 
I'll let you get settled and then maybe we can show you around if you'd like. I know you had a long flight, so... Marinette's voice drifted off, trying not to seem too pushy. She wouldn't blame him if he just wanted to go lay down for a few minutes. I'd love to. That sounds great. I've only ever been to Paris on business trips and I haven't gotten to sightsee much. With a rolling suitcase in one hand and a duffel bag draped over his shoulder, he moved awkwardly through the narrow hallway. Chloe's eyes trailed after the blonde model. When he was out of sight, she ran to Marinette's side, way too close to her, blue eyes nearly bulging out of her skull. Marinette, did you, like, see him? Her friend's face flushed pink. It was rare to see Chloe get flustered over anything. Yes, Chloe. Why? Marinette took a step backwards, crossing her arms. She smirked at Chloe's expression. I mean, he seems so... I know. And in person, he is so... Chloe couldn't even finish her sentence. I know, Marinette emphasized as she caught a glimpse of Chloe's eyes looking towards the room Adrian was settling into. No, Chloe, I know what you're thinking. No, the answer's no. Marinette lightly stomped her size five feet as she turned away from Chloe, arms still crossed. Oh, why, Marinette? Don't be such a stick in the mud. She grabbed Marinette's shoulders to turn her around. The tall blonde slouched just a bit to look Marinette in the eyes. Marinette broke out of Chloe's grip. No, you cannot date a client. It's unethical. His father is paying us to do a job. She flailed her arms back and forth, hoping Chloe would get the message. Well, now that you said I can't date him, it makes me want him even more. Chloe! What? I haven't had a boyfriend since Luca broke up with me. Whatever, he and Zoe are perfect for each other, even if she is my sister. Chloe wrinkled her nose before continuing. I want that. I want to be happy too. Chloe monologued as she walked, plopping down in one of the kitchen chairs. Marinette's face softened. Chloe, you're amazing. Luca just found his person. You will too. He's out there, okay? You're a catch. Who wouldn't want to be with you? Luca, apparently, Chloe remarked snidely. Before Marinette had a chance to respond, Adrian emerged from his room, hair smoothed, looking somehow refreshed. It was getting late already, but Adrian was running on New York time, so he appeared wide awake. There must be some reason people call it the city that never sleeps. Tonight, they'd take Adrian on a tour of Paris. Not a generic tour of the Eiffel Tower or Notre Dame, but the places Parisians actually visit all the time. Of course, they'd take him to see those monuments also. Did you really visit Paris if you didn't? So, today they'd frolic in the streets of Paris. But tomorrow, they'd get to work, because Fashion Week Three is only five months Marinette away. Marinette Dupin Chang's apartment. The quiet shrouded the small apartment with only the light sound of Marinette snoring filtering from her room. Chloe rested on the living room couch. Well, she didn't really rest. She tossed and turned, waking periodically until she decided to get up, checking her phone that had fallen on the floor. Ugh, 3 a.m. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. And so... parched. Her throat suddenly felt like fire. Chloe, still groggy from sleep, shuffled to the refrigerator. Upon opening the double doors, she looked away, blinded from the refrigerator light. It was quite a shock to her system, along with the chilly air that it emitted. Chloe reached into the bottom drawer, pulling out a bottle of water, quickly opening the cap and drinking half the bottle in one sip. She placed her weight on the kitchen counter, panting, but her throat felt slightly better. She heard feet shuffling toward her. Who could possibly be awake at this hour? Please be Marinette. Please be Marinette, Chloe silently wished. But, of course, it wasn't. A blonde head rounded the corner, nearly bumping into Chloe. Oh, sorry, miss. I guess my head is a bit foggy, huh? My bad. The man's eyes never left the ground. Oh. My. God. 
Adrian Agress was standing less than a meter from her. He attempted to stay calm and collected, but on the inside? Oh, on the inside, she couldn't contain herself. Was she excited? Nervous? About to vomit? She couldn't tell. After a moment's hesitation, she held her hands out to reassure him. No, no, please don't apologize. I shouldn't just be standing around. She became acutely aware that she probably looked like a hot mess. The beautiful blonde ran her fingers through her wild locks, which didn't do much. She then took a closer look at Adrian's face, which was devoid of emotion. Blank, but still... sad. Are you... okay, Adrian? She didn't want to pry, but a guy like Adrian deserved to be on cloud nine. He was their guest, too. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, I'm fine. Just couldn't sleep, I guess. Couldn't sleep is right. He looked rough. Chloe had never seen him like this before. Sure, as a model herself, she knew that models didn't always look well-rested and sometimes they had bad days. But she never thought of Adrian like that. She wasn't sure why. He just seemed so perfect. Chloe reached into the refrigerator, grabbing him a water as well. Thank you, he mumbled, taking a large swig of the bottle. Chloe's eyes crinkled as she smiled at him fondly. Yeah, don't mention it. Um, I'm not really good at this. The whole advice thing. But, uh, do you want to talk? Talk? Adrian echoed, finally looking at her. His emerald gaze pierced her heart and sent a lump to her throat. Uh, yes. I mean, if you want, that is. Her cheeks went pink, but she hoped it was dark enough that he wouldn't notice. He turned, placing his back against the counter, now only inches from her. Chloe, right? She nodded timidly. Let me ask you, have you ever felt trapped? Her blue eyes went wide with wonder. Trapped? Yeah. Like your life has been predetermined for you. And no matter what you do, you can't break out of the life that's been planned for you by someone else. His eyes drifted back to the floor, blonde hair falling in his face. Chloe's eyes fell to the ground, staring at the white, tiled flooring. She hurt for this man. This man she barely knows. But she felt like she knew him. Oh, and how she wanted to know him more. Yeah, I know what you mean, I think. My father is rich, and my mother left when I was five. I was always given everything I wanted. I thought I was happy. But I wasn't. I never was. Those material things only quelled the sadness I had inside. I was evil, too. All through middle school and high school, to everyone, even Marinette. But after working with her, I'm making a difference. And I love where I'm at in my life. Even if it took me a long time to get here. Her eyes brimmed with tears as she spoke softly. He chuckled lightly. <laughs> I think we have a lot in common, Chloe. Except you're brave. You left. You broke out of your old life and became someone new. I... I want that. What's stopping you? She asked, hoping this wasn't exactly prying. But she wanted Adrian to do what he wanted. She knew what it felt like for someone else to call the shots in her life. My father. He's gruff and sometimes rude, but I love him, you know? My mother passed away when I was 13, and my father hasn't been the same since. He threw himself into developing this brand, which is successful, but I've been right alongside him, doing everything he tells me to. So much that I've forgotten what I want to do. I can't even remember a time when I had a dream of my own. A sob broke out of Adrian's throat. He clasped his hands over his eyes, shielding his face from view. Chloe's heart broke. She absentmindedly rubbed his back in slow circles until his breathing settled. They hadn't realized they'd been talking in the dark for several minutes. And then... Chloe realized she had just touched Adrian Agrest. How embarrassing! But still, she craved that closeness with him. She felt vulnerable. 
Or maybe she needed to just go back to bed. The teary-eyed man cleared his throat, straightening his posture. Thank you, Chloe, for talking to me. I'm so embarrassed by how I've just laid out my entire life story. I'm sorry. She shook her head fervently. Nuh-uh, don't even. You've probably been holding on to that for a while, huh? He nodded his head just once. It's okay to be upset and to talk about things. So don't worry about it. I'm always here to listen. Without warning, he grabbed Chloe into a bear hug. She hesitated before returning his hug, feeling the warmth of his skin through his t-shirt, his back slowly rising and falling with breath. How could something so wrong feel so right? She told Marinette she wouldn't have any kind of relationship with him, but then what was she doing? It was just a hug. Innocent, right? She felt feverish in the most wonderful way. He pulled away from her, still holding her shoulders, looking at her intensely. He placed the softest kiss on her cheek, which sent Chloe's head reeling. Her inside squealed and her face burned. Adrian turned from her with a stretch and a yawn. I guess I'll try to actually get some sleep. Thanks, Chloe, he said over his shoulder. He walked back to the guest room, footsteps fading. She held her cheek, still burning from his touch. Yeah, no problem, Chloe whispered after he was long gone. In a trance, she twirled over to the couch and sprawled out. With thoughts of Adrian running through her mind, she was sure to have nothing but sweet dreams. Another late night, and Marinette was hard at work. One month left. The clock was ticking, and she wished she had more time. She never stopped working day after day. The young designer yawned, covering her mouth with one hand while pushing fabric with the other. Marinette's eyes fluttered with sleep, then bulging open, gasping, nearly sewing her hand to the metallic black fabric. She yanked her hand back, rubbing it. She glanced around, spying Chloe sitting in a chair nearby, texting furiously. Marinette narrowed her eyes, squinting at her friend whose eyes were still glued to the screen. Chloe? No response. Hey, Chloe? Still no response. Come on, Marinette's voice wasn't exactly quiet. Marinette stomped her bare feet over to Chloe, snatching the phone from her busy hands. Hey, what are you doing? Give it back! Chloe bolted up as if the seat was on fire, reaching for her phone. Marinette held it above their heads, which wasn't super effective, as Marinette was at least three inches shorter. No, what's with you, Chloe? Marinette struggled, pushing the blonde away. You've been looking at your phone so much lately. Fashion week is one month away. Your head isn't in it. Chloe backed off, crossing her arms, throwing a hip out. Fine. Give me my phone and I'll sew these stupid flowers or whatever. Or whatever? Marinette whispered with an intense flame burning in her eyes. This could be the biggest move of our career and you're willing to sew the flowers or whatever? She eyed Chloe up and down, moving mere inches from her face. What are you hiding? Nothing. Why? Chloe turned away from Marinette, nose upturned. You just seem... happier. Well, happier for you. Marinette scrutinized Chloe's face, grabbing the ring light off her desk, shining it at the guilty party's face. Seriously, Marinette? You've been watching too many crime and detective shows. Chloe moved the light out of her face, her eyes readjusting to the normal low lighting of the sewing studio. Marinette's steely gaze never left Chloe's eyes that grew wider under her stare. Okay, fine, but you have to promise you won't get mad. Marinette crossed her arms, smirking. We'll see. Avoiding eye contact, Chloe mumbled. I've been texting Adrian. Her friend's eyes widened, hurt reflecting back at Chloe. What? I'm sorry, Marinette, but I really like him, and I think he likes me. Feeling this kind of spark doesn't happen very often. She looked down at her sock feet. 
Seeing how upset she was, Marinette's expression softened. I didn't know you actually liked him. What was she feeling? Jealousy? For this boy she barely knew? Oh. She didn't want to admit it, and she never would out loud. But she liked him too. A lot. Against her better judgment. But so did Chloe. And her friend's happiness meant the world to Marinette. I'm sorry, Chloe. I want you to be happy. Just be careful. Don't let it come in the way of work. We have a lot to do. Her gaze shifted from Chloe's face back to her sewing project. The fabric was still hanging from the sewing machine. Right. She was in the middle of this when nearly falling asleep. She sighed deeply before checking the time. Nearly 3 a.m. Great. I think I'm going to go to bed. I've been pulling too many all-nighters lately. I fear these suitcases under my eyes will never go away. She laughed humorlessly. Okay. I'll stay up a bit longer to sew these flowers. Or whatever. Chloe smiled cheekily at her joke. And Mayor, thanks for understanding. Sure, of course. The soon-to-be fashion icon staggered to bed, flopping onto it, pulling the covers over her head. Marinette told herself she wasn't sad. She had no reason to be, but still the tears came. She couldn't remember the last time she cried, especially over a boy. A boy that wasn't hers. What was she thinking? Fashion week was a month away. She couldn't afford these thoughts. Marinette had to keep moving forward, and nothing would stand in her way. Not even Adrian Agrest. 4 p.m. New York City. 10 p.m. France. Adrian peered out his office window, taking in the rainy New York cityscape. People bustled past, holding umbrellas, bumping into strangers. Taxis whirled by, ignoring the pedestrians. Some people longed for a life full of leisure, but Adrian couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Manhattan had to be one of the busiest cities in the world, and being a part of that washed him with a calmness. Only one hour left of work, unless Mr. Agrest calls another staff meeting. With one week until Fashion Week, meetings after work were becoming a more often occurrence, much to Adrian's chagrin. He sighed, still gazing out the window, fidgeting with his pencil, tapping it on the desk to the rhythm of the Mario theme song. He made it through the entire song when he felt his phone vibrate in his pocket. Chloe Bourgeois's picture popped up on his phone as her contact showed he had one new message. He tapped to open it. Hey, Adrian, can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. I apologize for being so forward. But, do you like me? Adrian's eyes widened as he reread the message five times, if not more. He played dumb in his next text. Yeah, of course I like you. Why wouldn't I? No, I mean, do you really like me? The way I like you? Adrian sighed deeply, rubbing his temples to avoid the splitting headache that was sure to come. Do I like her? he echoed to himself. Do you like who? The stern voice of his father sounded from the other side of the room as he entered Adrian's empty office. Uh, no one, sir. He panicked like a deer in headlights. Lying to his father was impossible. Mr. Agrest could sniff out even the tiniest of white lies. Hmm. It better not be that Dupain Chang girl. She is our business partner. Working for us and with us. I don't need an aggressed scandal. His voice had an edge to it, almost sounding dangerous. No, sir. Good. Now Miss Bourgeois may be a viable romantic interest for you. She runs in the same social circle as you. Dating her may be a smart career move. Gabriel Agrest gave a rare smile, thinking about his son's future. But the thought of this future made Adrian grimace. Chloe is nice and pretty, but I don't love her or anything. Love? 
Who said anything about love? Only fools marry for love. Marry? Adrian's throat went dry. He hadn't known this girl for very long, and his father was already throwing around the term marry? They weren't even dating. Nope. No, absolutely not. Adrian gathered his bearings, choking out the only thing he could think of. But father, you married for love, didn't you? Silence! The elder aggressed bellowed. And what did I say about calling me that at work? It's Sir or Mr. Aggressed to you. He turned, getting ready to exit the room. Before slamming the door, the intimidating man said, In thirty minutes there will be a staff meeting in the workroom. Don't be tardy. Adrian flinched at the sound of the metal door coming to a close. He then looked at the unanswered message from Chloe on his phone. Do I like her? He thought to himself. They had a lot in common. The last time he was in Paris, they really bonded. He liked her well enough, he supposed. But still, he liked Marinette. He knew he shouldn't. They were business partners, after all. There was just something about her. Something indescribably irresistible. His brain was so confused. To further heighten his confusion, a text came to his phone. Marinette. A photo message? He opened it and snorted. It was like she knew he had a meeting. It was a picture of Buddy the Elf with the caption, I like meetings. Meetings are my favorite. He clicked to save it to his photo gallery, then texted her back. Love this. How did you know that I got summoned for a meeting? Was a winky face too flirtatious? He just meant to be cheeky. Ugh, whatever, just send the stupid text, Adrian. Sent. Then, almost immediately, a girl just knows these things. She was cute and funny. And he was confused. Adrian needed to get his mind straight. He'd see Chloe and Marinette in a few days. Did he have to make a decision? Probably. Good thing it wasn't just up to him. He had no idea how Marinette felt about him, and he was way too chicken to ask. Then Chloe... She liked him. He had suspected it, but why did she like him? Being a handsome model had its drawbacks. Adrian chose not to date much because girls were usually more interested in his appearance or his wallet. Sometimes both. Was that the case with Chloe? Whatever it was, he kind of liked her. Her and Marinette. But that wasn't who he was. He wasn't the guy just going around wanting to date all of the girls leading them on. Adrian had to make up his mind. And so did they. Soon. Fashion week was only one week away. Seven days. He needed more time, and time was not on his side. Chloe, wake up! Marinette yelled, standing over her sleepy friend. If you don't wake up, we're going to miss our flight. She tugged on Chloe's comforter and in one swift movement pulled it off of her. Chloe curled herself into a small ball of silk pajamas. Chloe pressed on her phone, checking the time. Ugh, Marinette, it's 4 a.m. She flipped on her back, shoving the pillow over her head, blocking out the light above her. Our flight doesn't leave for another three hours. Yes, exactly. Three hours. I want to get to the airport no later than five. Do you realize how big this is? Why would you risk being late? With my luck, something will go wrong. Marinette's voice rose in pitch as she spiraled into panic. Through this, she grabbed Chloe's legs to yank her out of bed, but Chloe held on to the bed frame for dear life. Marinette dropped her legs, huffing. Then she got an idea. She grabbed a bottle of water from the refrigerator and came bolting back into Chloe's room. Hey, Chloe, are you rich or poor? What kind of utterly ridiculous question is that? Rich, of course. She scoffed even while half asleep. 
Marinette smirked, trying not to giggle. Are you here? You look a little poor to me. Chloe didn't have a chance to question her before Marinette tilted the bottle and spilled freezing water all over Chloe and her bed. She screeched like a banshee. Marinette couldn't hold back her laughter anymore. <laughs> Great, you're up, Marinette said, composing herself. Get dressed. I'll get you back, Dupin Chang. Her voice echoed through the apartment. Good thing Marinette didn't have any close neighbors. I'm sure you will, Marinette stated victoriously, strutting out of the room. Peeking her head back in, she said, Now, get dressed. Marinette stepped up to the counter, checking her bags. She held out the massive dress bag, pulling it back as soon as the clerk reached for it. Marinette, stop being a spaz. Chloe rolled her eyes at her friend's indecision. This bag is super important. Whatever happens, this dress must arrive safely, okay? I assure you, mademoiselle, everything we check gets from point A to point B. No need to worry. She sighed a breath of relief, letting the dress leave her fingers. The pair dodged and weaved through security, presenting IDs and passports, placing carry-ons through conveyor belts. With each obstacle, Marinette's heart beat uncontrollably. Chloe took her hand when they were settled on the plane, in first class, the best Gabriel's clout and money could buy. Girl, you're shaking. It's gonna be okay. Everything will be great. I mean, you have the best model. She struck a small pose, laughing at her own joke. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It'll be fine. Her breathing settled as she stared out the window, watching the clouds pass by slowly. The plane flew high in the sky over the Atlantic Ocean. The sun rose steadily, a pit settling in her stomach. Just as Marinette's eyes fluttered with sleep, the plane touched down roughly, startling her. The Newark airport bustled, people running to catch a plane to who knows where. Unfamiliar languages filled the corridors as the girls hustled to baggage claim. No matter how many times she flew, Marinette loved airports while Chloe despised them. They were too busy. She hated the thoughts of strangers bumping elbows with her as they both tried to just get to where they were going. Their luggage fortunately arrived safely, but most importantly, the dress was safe. Marinette clutched it tightly to her chest as she whirled around, meeting another body with a thud. I excuse me, I'm so sorry. Marinette stammered as she smoothed the large dress bag which slipped in her arms. Don't worry, Marinette. I'm just glad to see you. The voice immediately sent a lump to her throat. Her eyes drifted up from the floor, landing on Adrian and peering down at her. He held her shoulders tightly to support her balance. He chuckled at her dumbfounded expression. We have to stop meeting like this. An embarrassed Marinette opened her mouth to speak, but was promptly interrupted by Chloe marching between them. Adrian! She placed a kiss on either side of his face. Great to see you. Shall we? She took his elbow, indirectly staking her claim. Sure, okay. He gave a half-smile that didn't go unnoticed by Marinette. She wasn't the best at picking up clues or interpreting them, but there was something going on. She had little time to think about it. Tomorrow was the biggest day of her career. Time to show the world what Marinette Dupin Chang could do. No time to think about boys. Even really nice, handsome, irresistible boys. Marinette Dupin Chang, the night before Fashion Week in Adrian's guest bedroom. Marinette sat beneath a warm blanket in a bed much bigger than her own. The spare room felt bare and unfamiliar and a bit lonely. Chloe probably had been sleeping in her own guest room for a few hours now, but not Marinette. No, Marinette laid wide awake thinking of every scenario that could happen tomorrow and everything that could go wrong. She picked up her phone from the nightstand, squinting as the light lit up the otherwise pitch-black room. 
Oh, fashion week was today. 2 a.m. She had to be up by 6.30 at least. The nightmare continues. Marinette sat her phone down about to readjust herself into a fearful sleep when footsteps came pitter-pattering down the hall. The creak of the door echoed around the hardly furnished space. She shielded her eyes as they adjusted to the light spilling from the hallway. Adrian? Marinette rubbed her eyes. Was she seeing things? But no. He was there. At 2 a.m.? What are you doing here? He rubbed the back of his neck, leaning on the doorframe. I, uh... Hi. He waved shyly at Marinette, who looked more like a burrito wrapped in her fluffy blanket. I saw a light under your door and I wanted to check on you. Um, how are you? This had to be the most awkward conversation. Uh, fine, I guess. Stressed about tomorrow, though. Yeah, do you want to talk about it? He finally looked at her. It was hard to make out his expression in the darkness. Still, Marinette appreciated the gesture. She said nothing, instead swinging her legs across the edge of the bed, patting the spot next to her. Adrian sat in silence, hoping Marinette would lead the conversation. The awkward tension was nearly unbearable. Actually, you know what? It's fine. I'm just being Marinette. Stressed and neurotic. Her voice lingered, looking for another word to describe herself. And beautiful, Adrian said, but immediately regretted it, as Marinette's blue eyes turned towards him, mouth hanging open slightly. Huh? I mean... He took a gulp, wondering if he should repeat himself or not. Uh, I think you're really beautiful. You should be kinder to yourself, you know. You're talented. My father wouldn't want to work with you if he didn't believe in you, so... Believe in yourself. Marinette's cheeks burned underneath his stare, and she prayed he hadn't noticed. Um, thank you, Adrian. You're right. I'm not confident at all. I've done a lot of things, but it never feels like enough. I've isolated myself from many of my friends to throw myself into my art, and it feels subpar at best. I feel limited. Adrian raised his sweaty palm to place it on her knee to reassure her, but felt like that may be too much. He definitely didn't want to overstep any boundaries. He put his hand back down. His knuckles turned white from where his nails dug into his skin. I think I know what you mean. Limited by the expectations you put on yourself? Expectations so high that even on your best day, it's impossible to reach them. Marinette blinked her eyes a few times. Adrian understands. Of course he does. Not only does he have to meet his expectations, but also his father's. Her eyes softened, looking at his slumped posture. Marinette reached over, grabbing one of his hands. Hey, as my father always told me, you can only do what you can do. Maybe it's time we follow that advice. Adrian gave her hand a firm squeeze, looking at her long fingers, some of them dressed with band-aids probably from a sewing mishap. You're right, Marinette. I can only do what I can do. I shouldn't stress about everything else. All I can do is try my best. Right? Their fingers moved to be intertwined, but neither of them realized it. Adrian slowly brought her hand to his lips, placing a gentle kiss on her knuckles. Wow, I came in here to check on you, but you cheered me up. You're amazing, Marinette. The blush returned to her face. She said nothing, but smiled, still holding his hand that felt much warmer than her own. It was a chilly February early morning. Mere hours left before she had to get up for fashion week. I probably need to go to bed and get some sleep. 
As the words left her lips, Marinette's heart sank. She didn't want him to leave. She wanted to stay just like this, hands intertwined, sitting close to this boy that made her feel like home even when she was thousands of miles away from her tiny apartment. Yeah, okay. Me too. It's a big day. He started to get up from the bed, but hesitated. Marinette, I have to be honest with you. Okay? What could he possibly have to say? I have to be honest, but your designs aren't that good. I have to be honest, I can't wait for you to leave New York. Don't panic, Marinette. It can't be anything too bad. Adrian took in a breath that he seemed to hold for a few minutes. I like you, Marinette. A lot, and I know I shouldn't. My father would kill me if he knew I felt this way, but I can't help it. I... These ramblings were cut off by Marinette's giggling. Thank God, I was imagining the worst. I know we're business partners, Adrian. But I really like you, too. It's frustrating how much I like you because I'm trying to keep myself focused on Fashion Week, but then I think about you and... Well... Can I kiss you, Marinette? Okay. She replied without hesitation, moving closer to his beckoning lips. So close, but then... I can't. He backed away, an embarrassed look spread across his face. Oh. Not because I don't want to, but because of Chloe. Chloe? What does she have to do with this? She's crazy about you. You should know. She texts you all the time. Marinette chuckled, easing the tension in the air. Oh, right. Adrian said with hardly any emotion in his voice. Marinette continued, her voice soft. The part of her that craved Adrian screamed at her. But she would never do anything to jeopardize her friendship with Chloe. Chloe is my best friend. We're more like sisters. I wouldn't want to hurt her. I like you, and I'd love nothing more than to kiss you right now, but I can't. You're a great friend, Marinette. I totally get it. I think... I'll talk to Chloe tomorrow. I don't want to lead her on, and I need to be clear about my feelings. And after tomorrow's walk, I'll give you that kiss. Promise? Marinette laughed half-heartedly, somehow still feeling guilty, but holding out a pinky. I'm a man of my word, milady," he said, performing some grand princely-like gesture while interlocking his pinky with hers. He placed a kiss on her cheek, then exited her room, stealing one final glance at her. Marinette threw herself down on the bed, mind swirly, drowsiness nearly taking her. Before succumbing to a restless sleep, Marinette's hand drifted to her lips, thinking of her almost kiss. She entered a dreamless sleep. Three hours until she had to be up. Three hours until she'd see Adrian again. Marinette stared at her friend who wore the satin dress she made with her own hands. The dress clung to Chloe's small waist, blossoming out, embroidered with gold trim and the small metallic flowers Chloe sewed by hand. The dress, composed of several layers, looked beautiful as her hair fell in golden curls, the final product completed by a smoky eye with cat eyeliner. You look amazing, Chloe! Marinette's eyes began to well up. She thought back on the past few months. Everything in her career had led to this moment. I know, boasted Chloe as their team zoomed around, making sure she looked picture perfect. I do look amazing. As for you, well... Chloe gestured to her eyes, attempting not to say anything hurtful. Marinette's hands flew to her face, feeling the bags under her eyes. Even a pound of concealer couldn't solve this problem. Couldn't sleep. Too anxious, I guess. A lie straight through Marinette's teeth. Well, not completely. She did have some trouble sleeping, but the rest of it? She was with Adrian. Her heart quickened at even the thought of him.
As if on cue, a knock sounded on the dressing room door. Adrian entered dressed in all black with one gold rose placed in his jacket pocket as a reference to Marinette's creation. Chloe, you look! He started, taking in all of her. Stunning, gorgeous, fabulous. Yes, I know. Thank you, Adrian. Marinette chuckled silently. She wished she had a fraction of Chloe's confidence and self-worth. Marinette had been bullied throughout her childhood. For being too quiet or being part of the art club. Those years in middle school when she had glasses and braces. And through this time, Chloe was nothing short of perfection. His attention shifted to Marinette, who stood by awkwardly holding a clipboard, carefully managing her time. Hello, Marinette. How are you feeling? The question was crafted in a way that she thought didn't apply to just this day. Or she could be overthinking, like she tends to do with everything. I'm fine, actually. I'm better than fine. I'm good. She smiled at him, wondering if his heart also skipped a beat. Well, that's good. He cleared his throat as he checked his watch. Thirty minutes until showtime. Everything seems on track here. I will be in the front row with Mr. Agrest. He should be arriving shortly. Adrian turned his back to leave, reaching for the doorknob. Adrian? Chloe piped up, looking uncharacteristically anxious. Can I speak to you for a minute? Alone? Adrian surveyed the room, taking a gulp. He nodded as the makeup and hair crew fled the oversized dressing room. Even Marinette, who looked at Adrian anxiously before closing the door behind her. Good morning, Chloe. What can I do for you? Adrian winced at his choice of words. Maybe he was speaking a bit too formally with her. He just wanted to create some distance. She picked up on the difference in his tone, but turned it into a joke. Well, good morning, sir. She emphasized, her tapered eyebrows raised. She chuckled, looking away from him. This felt bizarre. Here she was, in this beautiful gown, talking to this equally beautiful man that she was crazy about. Adrian, I have something that I wanted to give you. Oh, Chloe, please. You don't have to give me anything. Adrian immediately held his hands in protest, taking a few steps back. Chloe closed the distance between them, taking his hands in hers. His eyes widened, brows furrowed in confusion. He had no idea where this was going. His heartbeat quickened, sweat forming on his forehead, hidden by his bangs. Shh. She placed one finger to his lips, moving towards him slowly. The only sounds in the room were the rustling of fabric as she walked, mixed with Adrian's pounding heartbeat. Inches from his face, Chloe's lips puckered with her eyes closed. Her eyelash extinctions were nearly long enough to tickle his cheeks. Internal conflict boiled in Adrian's stomach. He felt sick. This wasn't right. He couldn't kiss her. He wouldn't kiss her. Adrian jerked his hands free of her grip to hold her shoulders. He pushed her away from him gently. The way her face fell ate at his heart. Her eyes looked glossy, tears forming in the corners. She bit her lip to keep the sobs at bay. Chloe wasn't a crier. She couldn't remember the last time she actually cried. Maybe when her mother left. She had since realized that people were disappointing and undeserving of her tears. Until she let this stupid boy ruin her makeup. He waited for the explosion, but it never came. I see. You don't like me then, do you? She turned away from him, her arms supporting her weight on the makeup station. Chloe, I think you're great, but... She shot up, whipping around, a single tear rolling down her face. But? She echoed. You're right. I am great. We texted for months. You knew how I felt. I made that clear, and I assumed you felt... Ugh, whatever. I apologize for assuming. It won't happen again. She dabbed her eyes, attempting not to ruin her look. The door creaked open, filling the silence. Excuse me, miss. Places for the show. The disembodied voice spoke. It must have been the stage manager. Thank you, places. Chloe replied with formality and etiquette. 
Excuse me, Adrian. I think we should talk about I have nothing to say to you. If you'll excuse me. Chloe took her place, distracted. She was a professional, and a job had to be done. Miss Bourgeois, go. The stage manager instructed. Chloe stood straight, putting on a strong face. One foot, then another. She was greeted with a cacophony of cheers, applause, and the flashing of cameras. She could do this in her sleep. This was as easy as breathing. The stakes were high, but Chloe's confidence remained unshakable. That is, until Chloe realized why Adrian didn't love her. It was Marinette. She stood in the front row next to Adrian. She made subtle glances in his direction, and when Marinette wasn't looking, Adrian did the same. A sly smile spread across their faces like they were amused at some inside joke. Except the joke was Chloe. How foolish she'd been to think he'd love her. For the first time in her life, she felt her self-esteem take a hit. All her life, she swore to never let her self-worth be determined by a man's affection. So how was this any different? She exited the runway, the cheers falling on deaf ears. Who was she really upset with? Adrian, for toying with her emotions? Or herself, for letting him? Chloe exited the runway, tears staining her face with mascara. A tomato-headed man toting a camera approached her hesitantly. Chloe? He said carefully, as if trying not to spook her. What? What do you want? Get out of my face with that camera. She shielded herself with a perfectly manicured hand. He looked from his camera back to her. He then released it, allowing the equipment to dangle from his neck. I don't want a picture. I just wanted to check on you. Are you all right? She patted her face, attempting not to mess up her already ruined makeup, which had begun to look cakey. Do I look all right? Who even are you? He stared at her in shock. She didn't remember him. He scratched a stubbly face, no longer a shy boy, but a man. I'm Nathaniel. We were in Miss Bustier's homeroom sophomore year. She stared at him blankly. Nathaniel squinted his eyes in annoyance, lowering his shoulders. You threw a comic book I was working on to the ground and called it trash. And you also said I was ah, ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. There was a joking characteristic about his voice. Chloe crossed her arms, turning her back to the man with the flaming hair. She scoffed. I say that to a lot of people, but, well, I'm sorry I did that to you. She turned back to him reluctantly. I was a brat back then, and I'm not the same person now. If I were you, I'd hate me too. Her eyes wandered across the carpeted floor, staring intently at the square pattern. Hate you? No, I don't hate you. To be honest, I had a huge crush on you in school. His face now matched his hair as a blush spread, reaching even his ears. Oh. Chloe's blue eyes, wet with tears, stared at him in amazement. She had been so taken by Adrian that she'd never considered anyone else. Thanks, Nathaniel. She gave him a soft smile, then pulled on the handle of her dressing room door, nearly closing it behind her. Wait, Chloe. Nathaniel stuck his hand in the crack between the door and its frame. Ow! He yanked his hand back, grabbing his pointer finger. If possible, his face continued to grow redder, possibly out of pain, but more than likely due to embarrassment. Nathaniel, are you okay? Chloe flung the door back open, her hands flying to her face, attempting to hide the shock. Stupid boy. Why did he do that? Big metal doors generally hurt when they crush your fingers. He inhaled through his nose, still clutching his finger, shaking it as if that could take the pain away. Yeah, never better. Tis but a flesh wound, he said through gritted teeth. Chloe rolled her eyes at him. He obviously was a Monty Python fan. Dork. Or maybe she was a dork for catching the reference. You sure? Do you want some ice? Chloe opened the door for him to come into her dressing room. Nah, I'm tough. I would like to take you for dinner, though. He said, finally releasing his finger. She smiled sincerely. 
boys didn't generally ask her out. She couldn't be too sure why. Chloe realized in high school she wasn't the nicest. In fact, she could be quite cruel and her reputation had followed her even into her adult life. But Nathaniel seemed perfectly nice. And he still liked her even after all this time. I'm only in town for a few more days. Pick me up at seven tomorrow? Her voice was coy as her blue eyes batted uncontrollably. It looked like flirting, but the mascara actually started to burn her eyes. Great. Text me your address and I'll be there. Chloe gave an affirming nod, exchanging numbers with this handsome man. Chloe clutched the digits to her chest, watching him walk away. She entered the dressing room in a daze. Just an hour ago, she had been distraught over Adrian. But why? It's not like they knew each other. Not really. Only by texts and emails. But Nathaniel? They had history. Albeit a bad one. But he felt warm and familiar. It felt like this could be a positive step in her life. She went to unzip the back of her dress when the door flew open and Marinette clung to Chloe. Chloe, you looked so beautiful, majestic, amazing. Chloe tentatively patted her friend's back, still shocked from the impact. Well, it's your design, so if I looked amazing, it's all because of you. So, thanks. Marinette took a step back, taking in Chloe's appearance. Well, thank you for modeling. I couldn't have made it this far without you. Marinette, still obviously giddy, had to work to abstain from bouncing around. Great, great. I'm thankful for you, and you're thankful for me. Can we both be done thanking each other now? Chloe said, clearly exasperated, meaning it only as a joke. Well, there was some truth to it. Marinette giggled, still holding her clipboard, now with every box on her to-do list checked off. She rocked back and forth on her heels awkwardly, looking around the dressing room. Chloe raised an eyebrow, knowing that Marinette had something more to say. Chloe, I need to, to, to tell you something. Marinette stumbled over her words, holding the clipboard close, crumpling the papers under her eagle-like grip. Chloe turned away from Marinette, facing the mirror. She changed out of her dress into her aggressed apparel sweats. She may be upset with the face of the brand, but she couldn't deny the outstanding quality. Chloe was silent for far too long. As she placed the gown in a dress bag, she finally replied, It's about Adrian, isn't it? But how did you... Marinette, you're easy to read. Also, I know Adrian has feelings for you. Chloe tried to speak indifferently, but there laid pain behind her even tone. Oh, I see. Marinette stared at her feet as they squirmed uncomfortably. Chloe, I know you like him, so I don't want to start anything with him. That's not fair to you. I value our friendship way more. She wrapped Chloe in one more hug. She wasn't typically a huggy type person, but Chloe didn't push Marinette away. Instead, she leaned into the hug, placing her head on Marinette's shoulder. Marinette, I love you, and I want you to be happy, she said, still embracing her closest friend. If you like him, you should go for it. It's okay. She pulled away, rubbing her eyes, not caring about her makeup anymore. Chloe, what's wrong? She cleared her throat, reaching into her bag to pull out a piece of paper. I'll be fine. Here, take this. Marinette unfolded the paper only to see Chloe's plane ticket? Why would she give this to Marinette? Chloe will need it. Unless... What does this mean? Marinette stared at the piece of paper, eyes wide and filled with tears of her own. I'm not going back to Paris with you. I need to find my own path, and I think I might be able to do that in New York. Tears came pouring now. Marinette stared helplessly at the ticket, then back to Chloe. She stood motionless, not knowing what to do, where to go, or what to say. So she said nothing. I need to get my mind straight. If I could just have a moment, I need to figure out a way to tell Daddy Kins that I'm staying. She shot Marinette a smile before plopping down in front of a large illuminated mirror. 
Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, see you later. Marinette exited the room, the metal door somehow feeling much heavier than when she entered. She walked down the corridor in a daze, mindlessly staring at the ticket. She couldn't help but wonder if it was her fault that Chloe wanted to stay in New York. She thought about her actions and if she could do something to make Chloe come home. The fluorescent lights shining overhead gave her a headache as she continued to move aimlessly. Marinette! She heard from the other end of the hall. Her eyes shot up, only to find Adrian speeding towards her. Marinette, I've been looking for you everywhere. Is everything... okay? For the first time, he took stock of Marinette, noticing her appearance, face pink and eyeliner smudged. Mm Mm-hmm. Good. Great. She said unconvincingly. She thrust the ticket at him as if to explain. This is... a plane ticket to Paris? He looked as confused as she felt. It was Chloe's. She's staying here, and I'm going back to Paris. The tears started again. Marinette turned from him so he wouldn't see her cry. She felt abandoned, but knew deep down Chloe wasn't doing that to her. In life, people go their separate ways to do what's best for them. So why did this hurt so bad? Why did it feel so personal? Actually, I wanted to tell you something, Marinette. Adrian smiled at Marinette and placed an arm around her, attempting to calm her down. Okay. If it's something bad, can it wait? Today has been a roller coaster, and I'm just waiting for it to be over. She tried making a joke, but lacked the energy. No, nothing bad. I've just thought about it a lot, and I'm moving to Paris. Marinette's eyes drifted from the floor to meet his emerald gaze. She nearly didn't process what he said. You, you're moving to Paris? But why? Well, he started nonchalantly. The love of my life just so happens to live there. I can't imagine letting her go. She dropped the clipboard to the floor. The sound echoed through the empty hall with a deafening clatter. He chuckled as her face morphed into an embarrassed look. I... You, uh, you love me? I do. Which I guess is strange since we haven't known each other that long, but when I'm with you, I feel at home. I feel accepted for being just Adrian, and I hope you feel the same way. He took Marinette's cold hands in his. She gave them a firm squeeze, her hands migrating to rest around his neck. Kiss me, she whispered. He smiled crookedly before moving towards her. They shared their first kiss in a blank, empty corridor. People moved through, quickly preparing for photo shoots, runway walks, and interviews. But to Marinette and Adrian, the world stood still, if only for this moment. The kiss lingered before they broke apart, faces mere inches away. Marinette smirked at him, running her fingers through his golden hair. I just so happened to have an extra ticket. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it to the end, leave me a purple heart in the chat so I know. Also, don't forget to leave me a like and a comment telling me what you thought. And as always, stay miraculous.